hello, hello, and, and welcome to episode 109 of the City Brew Tours podcast, where we explore the best beer scenes around the United States. I'm your host, Brian. Welcome to the special 4th of July re- recording. We are recording this on Tuesday, July 4th, 2023. I uh, did not blow any of my fingers off today. I mostly just did the little snap poppy things because I have a three-year-old and that was appropriate fireworks to do around her. I had Underbergs already, had some beers at the parade, took a nap, and I'm ready to rock and roll tonight. I am so happy to be bringing you our featured city this month. It's a city that uh, a lot of people know about. Definitely not a small market by any means. I believe it is the largest city in the United States by population. And this uh, borough that we're featuring of that city is the largest, most populous borough I don't know if it's the largest. It's the most populous borough. Uh, we'll, we'll get confirmation on that from our wonderful co-host for these episodes. And speaking of our wonderful co-host, he is back. Uh, he is one of the Beer Avengers, a former co-host, previous co-host of um, our Twin City episodes of this very pro- fought, very podcast. Blah. Um, he's a good friend of the show. Please welcome back Ethan Angelica. How's it going, Ethan? I'm doing great, Brian. It's good to see you again. Thanks for yes. having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have our good friends from the Beer Avengers on here. And I think this is the first time we've had you on here solo with me. I think so. Yeah, I, I, I teamed up with uh, with the captain, also known as Glenn, this last time. But I'm delighted to be making a solo appearance this time uh, and continuing to spread some of the beer joy that both of us do whenever we get uh, on the airwaves. Yes, and uh, last time we talked about your your your, your early childhood home. Yes, the wonderful, yes, indeed. Wonderful state of Minnesota, and specifically mm-hmm. the Twin Cities of St. Paul and Minneapolis. But today, in this month, we are talking about your current home, Brooklyn, that is true. New York. Yes. Well, so now there's there's probably some debate here, right? Because I just recently hit that mark where I have now lived more of my life in New York City than I did in Minnesota. So I think uh, any perhaps any New Yorkers listening can confirm. I I understand that that officially puts me into New York cred. So uh, so it's a it was a big exciting moment recently that that when I passed over that bar when I think I really became a real New Yorker. So yeah, I think I think that uh, solidifies your status as a quote unquote real new yorker yes um, yes but i i am very uh very excited to get your take on these featured breweries this month we have some we have just an amazing lineup of breweries this month shout out to our fulfillment department and shout out to our beer club subscribers a special shout out to all of our new subscribers joining us this month really great box uh not that any of them are not great but really great box uh to start the month off with we featuring uh four breweries that are i would say fairly well known in the beer world uh i i I might say iconic uh sort of like staples of our brooklyn beer scene for sure definitely some of the ones that i know i find my way to pretty regularly in town and many of my beer drinker drinking cohorts in brooklyn also make their way to with good frequency uh, yeah, the 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 few times the the few times that I've been in New York and Brooklyn specifically, I have drank at all four of our featured breweries tonight, and uh, I, I uh, always like getting beers from these places. And excited to talk about them, and excited to talk to some of the people behind these wonderful beers. Mm-hmm. But tonight, it's just me and Ethan. We're gonna kick a month off here. I was planning on streaming in front of my grill and and having real real America vibes going on but the grill is not working so alas, oh. i am in my i am in my office here plain were, jane were, brian were you able to at least get a hot dog or a burger or something to really signify the day oh most certainly uh oh, good. We, we i alluded to a parade we went to yep. earlier my uncle mm-hmm. always throws a big fourth of july party and uh because my brother and i have extensive experience in the restaurant industry mm-hmm. we got uh tapped to helm the grill today so i cooked probably 20 to 30 burgers and uh, 30 to 40 hot dogs and uh eight not nearly that many a eight a a a reasonable amount of hot dogs and and uh hamburgers so I'm well, good. 
Good. I'm glad to hear it. I mean, just for, you know, since we are talking Brooklyn, Joey Chestnut did do his thing down at Coney Island today, even though the, the, the nature tried to rain him out. And I got to say, yeah. I know it was it was bad news. They thought they were going to cancel it. And then they brought it back. And I got to say, Joey, step it up, because last year your personal record is in the high 70s. And this year it was just 62. So we all need to do better, I think, this year. Yeah, come on, Joey. You're supposed to be a mm-hmm. shining light, a, a, a shining light and a, a pillar of American exceptionalism downing 70 plus hot dogs 62 those are weak numbers but I know I know well I will we'll just we'll just all have to make for up for it in his stead yeah let's all eat 18 hot dogs to make up for what he ate in like See? 10 10 minutes exactly exactly it's it's yeah insane. Yeah. I watched a, I watched a little bit of it and I still just can't get over the bun in oh, the water the dipping it's, yeah yeah <laughs> not even dipping like they're, they're yeah. mushing one dog into their face with one hand and their other hand is completely submerged in a cup full of water soaking the next one so that they can switch and yeah. gobble yeah. down another glizzy and uh it, yeah it's wild it's wild times well it, i think the best way to wash that down though is probably with some beer if you've got any room left in your stomach <laughs> let's go i love that segue ethan that's why you're here that's why you Thank get you. invited back we are featuring two breweries to kick off this wonderful month uh where we're going to talk about brooklyn new york we are featuring other half mm-hmm. maybe you've heard of them and threes brewing company probably haven't heard of them but two as 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 Ethan said earlier, pillars of the Brooklyn beer community. And let's start off with this other half. Yeah. Um, This is a New England style pale ale. Uh, We have a a West Coast IPA from threes tonight. So I'm going to say we have a Westie and a Bestie because there you go. uh, I like New England style IPA. And uh, personally, I've had a lot of different beers from other half. And I think this is the thing they do exceptionally well is smaller abv super hop forward super flavorful beers uh this beer we're drinking is called forever ever it's a double dry hopped hazy india pale ale coming in just at 4.7 percent abv it is loaded with mosaic cashmere and citra hops and cheers ethan cheers always a pleasure to be drinking a beer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I, I other half blows me away because they are able to pack so much into something that is so tiny, right? It's it's never a beer that I feel like is is uh is is lacking, even though it may be a little bit lower in ABV. It always packs a punch, uh, and this one for me definitely feels like it's no different. Yeah, it's super soft. It's super mm-hmm. approachable, but yeah, it's double dry hopped, so you get a ton of like ripe fruit aroma i'm getting mm-hmm. a little bit of berry yep i got some like ooh, peach grapefruit in there for me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then yeah not thin on body at all that like you can eat, a lot of breweries a lot of a lot of lower abv ipas like this can be thin in the middle and i think other half nails that so well with this this full body no matter how small of a beer it is they they get big beer vibes out of, out of <laughs> <Yes>. little beers <laughs> hashtag big beer vibes i love that i think we should get that trending on the internet yeah no although it's, the, it's oh, go ahead i was gonna say although that could be misinterpreted as it's like big beer vibes as in like miller or course oh yeah no vibes. no none of, none of that no big big you know it's it's like you know though though, big, though big. they are we but they are mighty it is it yes. is truly they are they duly true and and i gotta say i've been so impressed to see other half grow because i remember sort of their beginnings in in brooklyn and now we you know they have uh they're in the new domino factory with this gorgeous view they've got this cool little sort of industrial tap room that's closer to where i live um and then you know they're in dc and philly they've really kind of begun to expand and if you happen to be in midtown they've got a tap room right in rockefeller center so from being this kind of destination place that we would all go to i've loved to see them grow but not ever decrease the quality like it's always been something where you get something from other half and you're excited to see what they're doing. And I love when that happens. Yeah. Other half founded all the way back in 2014. If you didn't mm-hmm. know, their name is a reference to their desire to push boundaries. When they started mm-hmm. in 2014, you know, a lot of the industry was these bigger 
craft breweries dominating. You know, 2014, it was the time of Victory and Dogfish Head and mm-hmm. Brooklyn Brewery. Yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. Talk, talk a little bit more about them later. Yes, and indeed. Sierra Nevada and Southern Tier and these big breweries that were really kind of pushing where the market was going. And other half determined that oh, we, we want we want to push boundaries, but in a different way with innovations and and small batches. So their name is a, an allusion to them wanting to represent that other half of the industry as they saw it. So I always thought that was cool. I, I didn't know that what their name was about until I uh, until I started doing research for the show this week. And uh, I like that. Yeah. I like that and lot. yeah, I, I love a brewery that just says, OK, let's see what we got and swings. Um, and, you know, and what I also appreciate about other half is that I always know that when they're swinging, they're swinging big. And like, I, I'm trying to think of when I've had one where I was like, OK, we tried. But I can't think of with other half one where it really was like we kind of hit a little bit too far on this one because they've sort of got whatever they put out is consistently interesting and exciting. And and hashtag big beer vibes, if that's where we're going on this episode a little bit. Yep. They don't they yeah. don't really try. They don't really play play to the play on the lower levels. They really have sort of brought it up. And it's I'm happy to see them growing. I'm happy to see more people continuing to drink it because I think initially we all thought it was like our little secret. And now that the secret's out, they've have more to play with, which is cool. Yeah, I um, I remember the first time I visited New York City back in 2019, fall mm-hmm. of 2019. Um the, my first stop was other half on Halloween. Oh. oh, you that was a choice, my friend. That was a very strong choice. How did that go for you? It was wonderful. I mean, um, that original tap room is located under what I would assume is a subway bridge. I yep. think. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah. It's it's uh, I think it may actually be the may, maybe like a subway and car at the same time, which means you get a lot of shaking and a lot of noise. Yes. Either way, it's the it's the encapsulation of Brooklyn right there. So I pulled into the city. I was I happened to be driving a city brew tours van. No, mm-hmm. wait, no, I was driving my car the first time I went up there. Excuse me. I was driving my car, pulled in, found a parking spot. And as I was walking under that bridge, I was like, oh, my God, this feels like New York City. So mm-hmm. much the yep, trains yep, yep. above me. There's all these people out in their their Halloween best. It was like eight or nine o'clock at night when I finally made it into town. Side note, Pittsburgh to New York City. Very long drive. Oh, very, very much so. Very long drive. Yes. Um, walked into the tap room. It's this beautiful curated atmosphere, but it didn't it it wasn't short on that small brewery vibe. You could see back right. into the brewery. You could see yep. big stacks of malt. You could see, you know, their production equipment hoses hanging it 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 felt it felt very much like an original location and and it is it was it was their first location when they opened yeah. in 2014 and as ethan has mentioned they have expanded quite a bit they have a location here in my home state over on the other side in philadelphia they have a location down in dc they have a location in buffalo in the finger oh. lakes I I always forget that they've said they've also gone upstate. I just maybe yeah. I guess I don't spend as much time upstate. I'm one of those New Yorkers that tends to be a little more of a downstater. But good, Buffalo should enjoy this beer too. When you say when you say upstate, do you do you mean like Finger Lakes? Because I feel like some New Yorkers they say upstate and they they they're like the Hudson Valley is upstate. <laughs> Well, yes. Yeah, so there is debate as to whether the Hudson Valley and Westchester is upstate. I tend to, I don't know. I've I've spent enough time working all throughout the five boroughs and also a little further out to Long Island and up um, into Westchester that I think of basically anything. If I if I have to, if there's is now a car required, and it's not something that I can just sort of step onto a train. You know, we're not doing an Amtrak situation. We've probably established an upstate situation uh, as a part of that. <laughs> so that tends to be where I draw the line. But yes, I'm sure some of. I mean, I have I have friends who are are you know don't even cross 14th Street in Manhattan, let alone come all the way down to Brooklyn. So, <laughs> and it looks like I've got a, a long, long Long Islander agreeing with me in the chat that it is anything north of Westchester. So I will take that as a newly adopted New Yorker from a lifelong Long Island islander as to our official dividing line you heard it here first on the city brew tours podcast thanks this is what's up <laughs> thanks doug in the chat for for validating <laughs> ethan's opinion we love to see it um cheers but yeah that other half has just blown up and not lost on quality this beer mm-hmm. is as good i'm pretty sure i had this when i went there mm-hmm. i had this i had a mylar bags i oh yeah it's a good one i i i can't i it was funny when you were mentioning the um they took swings 
they've, they've, you've had beers where they've taken swings and you've never had one where it was like, oh, this, this didn't work out. I bought a weird ass beer when I was there. I want to say it was like an IPA that they, they made to taste like Doritos or something oh, crazy. I must and have missed that one. I would I have jumped on that. I can't, I can't remember what it was. I should, I should have looked it up before the show, but it was, yeah. it was a wild swing like that. And I was like, all right, well, whatever I'm here. I don't know when I'm coming back. I'm going to get this one. And man, if it didn't take taste like whatever crazy snack they were trying to make it taste like it, it was impressive to say the least. Yeah. Well, uh, I feel like the, the Brooklyn beer scene is for many of our places do look to be creative. Um, and, uh, and I, I appreciate that because, you know, we are Brooklyn. Brooklyn continues to believe that we are weird. I tend to agree that we still are kind of weird. And so if our beers are not being a little bit weird along with us, like, what are we doing folks? We need to try this whole thing over again. So. Yeah. And, and it's funny because the other half is branding is not very mm. weird. You know, some of it can no. be, you know, yeah. the broccoli stuff, uh, yep, yep. but you look at this forever, ever, and it's a very plain can. It's just a, a see-through label that ha that's slapped on it with a really nice, colorful, forever, ever circular yeah. logo. But that when you look at the can, you're not, oh, this is this is a weird book, Brooklyn Brewery. They're very professional in yeah. how they present themselves. And then when you dig a little deeper, you find the weirdness. And that's what I that's what I think about when I think mm -hmm. about Brooklyn weird. You know, Portland, Austin, these, these yeah. towns that are so associated with weird. I feel like the weird is on the surface. Yes. And Brooklyn, you dig a little bit more and you're rewarded for finding that weirdness. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. It takes a little bit of work um, to find your sort of deep, dark corners of Brooklyn, especially as we sort of, you know, changed, especially in the nearly two decades I've lived here. Um, you know, I, I we've seen things change in the city, but we still have our pockets of of cool and craziness. Um, I live in uh, in Dumbo, which for those of you who are not visiting, stands for down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. And I am pleased to say in the over, oh gosh, it's been over 10 years in my little apartment as we have changed and grown. I We have this iconic street. We've had two brook, uh, breweries spring up within walking distance of my apartment, um, which uh, they are Evil Twin and um, Randolph Brewing. Uh, and they, to, to have that kind of come into my existence, kept some of the like, as, you know, we, we, we're a place that people love to come and take pictures because as you should, it's a gorgeous neighborhood with lovely views of lower Manhattan. But, you know, we need our crazy little people trying cool beer stuff and with, you know, um, their fermenters kind of bare right next to the sidewalk because that's all the room they've got. Um, <laughs> I love that that maintains in in the neighborhood, even as things have sort of grown and changed over the last couple of years. Well, it's funny. We, I just I just went on that little little rant about weirdness being under the surface i'll mm -hmm. take that back when evil twin moves in because the weirdness that's is very, true very much on the surface of evil well, twin. yes evil twin is one that certainly um they're the ones where i say well they swing and either they knock it out of the park or i'm like okay well i'm, I'm proud of us so for those of you who, yeah, haven't, who haven't you tried been, you tried, yep. Um, and for and and here's the thing. I I again living uh living quite literally a block from their Dumbo tap room. Uh, I get to go there a lot, which is a lot of fun. And um, and I will always ask for a taster on something that I have a question mark about because either I'm gonna want four of them or I'm gonna be like, well, that was enough for me. Um, so and I'll be be fair. That's part of the reason I keep going is because I kind of never know what's gonna show up. Right. And I love I, you know, I, as I'm sure most of us do with our local breweries. I love that sort of sense of experimentation, but I love it even more with Evil Twin because I've had everything from this beautifully complex IPA that unfolded over five different sips. And I basically tasted every single hop that was in it to a sour that had so many berries in it that I was like, I don't I can't taste anything anymore. And within one sip, I was like, I think my mouth is done for the night. And it was named something like, you know, you have to swipe the Metro card three times before you get on the subway <laughs> because the person behind you is going to yell at you unless you get it right this next time or something insane like that, which is, of course, their naming convention. Um, so which is also the reason that I, I feel like I occasionally am like, I had this really good beer. I don't remember what it was called. It was yeah. long and something about Metro cards or donuts. I don't know. I will. I'll try. I'll bring you there the next time you're in town and we can find one. Like that's sort of my go to with Evil Twin. Um, so but if I'm looking for weird and consistency. Uh, other half, it tends to be a, an excellent go to for that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Other half is great for it. 
and um can you talk more about the the neighborhood directly around that original other half location yeah so it's a little bit more um so it's in Borham Hill, um, which is within walking distance of Dumbo. It's a little bit of a hike, but it's not too bad. Um, and that area is a little bit more residential, um, but with some sort of industrial pockets. So it does lead over to the uh, the sort of like um, the Brooklyn, uh, the BQE overpass. Um, and so there's a little bit more sort of like industrial, but within a couple of blocks, it's sort of a residential area, which kind of makes it feel like almost a neighborhoody spot. Um, That's where... Uh... That's where uh, the Nets play, right? Aren't they? Aren't they close to there? Uh yes, you can get with there within a quick walk. I mean, here's the thing: you're in Brooklyn, so anything's a quick walk if you try hard enough. Yeah. But yes, it's got it's got more of a residential feel, which is pretty, which is kind of nice, um, but also kind of an industrial sense, which is what gives them the opportunity to have enough space to actually be a brewery. And it is always intriguing to me. And what I love is that sort of as New York has adjusted the way that you know we're allowed to have breweries and and looked at spaces where breweries could exist, we wound up getting these wonderful little pockets of areas around Brooklyn with a bunch of breweries in them where you can make a delightful little walking crawl for yourself. Um, because in my opinion, the way to drink beer in Brooklyn is on foot. Um, you need to start at one place and move to your next. Um, the, the the Beer Avenger crew, if you've listened to our podcast, those of us who founded this whole thing were, were lovers of the, the, the strolling beer crawl. Um, and the, the nice thing about being in a highly walkable area like Brooklyn is that that's kind of what happens. If you're going for a session of beer drinking, you find your first spot, you find your next spot, you find the pizza place in between the two, and then you find your third spot and maybe a dessert on the way um, and kind of work your way from subway stop to subway stop. Um, and, and other half kind of is a little bit, is a little bit more remote, but makes a nice beginning or end to the crawl. Um, a quick tip on Brooklyn crawling, if for some reason you find yourself in the better borough, as I like to call us, um, is to find to find your di most distant brewery and make that your first or your last stop. I tend to think first because then you 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 have enough cognition to figure out where you need to go next. Yeah. Um, but especially if something is near a train, makes a good ending. And I think we, I'm trying to think when the Beer Avengers have done crawls, I believe we have often used um, other half sort of as an initial starting point because from there you can very easily get to some other great Brooklyn breweries um, like uh, Strong Rope Brewing Company, uh, Wild East, which is a pretty wonderful kind of more oh. experimental brewery yeah. yep they do all sorts of crazy again this is another high swing one they hit really hard um i think of strong rope as sort of a staple in the brewing community in brooklyn um jason who is the brewer is really meticulous in what he does and so there's always a deep specificity in his beers which i just love um he also i do not understand how he names his beers but he like apparently like sort of maps the whole thing out and there's this whole system to the way that he comes up with them um that his his wife is his business manager and so he will like he will like have explained exactly why he's going to name the beer in the way that he does it and she'll be like okay you just do that now um but he's got a t he's got a little space right close by to all that um and then of course threes is sort of in that area uh as well so um, and it says, Doug says he prepped, we starting at Strong Rope. Well, honestly, it's a good place to start. It's a good place to end too. It's right by the train. It's a good place to go any day of the week, to be completely honest. Um, during the, at the height of the pandemic, uh, Strong Rope beers were one of the things that got me through. So I got a lot of love for, for our friends over there too. Yes. I guess we should say Strong Rope, City Brew Tours, mm -hmm. City Brew Tours homies. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. Along with, along with Wild East, um, you know, lots of the, it's nice to have, and again, these little pockets in Brooklyn make it so that you can build yourself a little crawl um, and still have public transport to take you back to your home or hotel or wherever it is you decide to go to. E Ethan is just talking about this very naturally because this is what he likes to do. It also, <laughs> it just so happens that City Brew Tours also runs walking tours oh well in yes brooklyn <laughs> it's the only city where we do um walking tours all the time we have some other cities where we do them off and on and we also do van tours but new york city we figured if we're going to do tours there we need to do it the way that new yorkers do so we run walking tours we take people uh into the subway station you know we give them a new york experience and um some of our greatest uh, best friends in the New York area are located in Brooklyn. 
And uh, if you ever want to go up to Brooklyn and explore some of the breweries we're talking about this month, City Brew Tours is the way to do it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> no question. Just, just swung into a plug there. Citybrewtours.com. Yeah, there you go. As as you should. Uh, and also, you know, it, it, it's um, and the, the the cool thing about, of course, going on the City Brew Tours things, I I in fairness, I am one of the early New York City tour guides. I did that whole thing for a while, for um for the at the beginnings of our times there. No, um, not, but, no, let's not say early. We we started New York, and I believe you're one of the very first. That's true. Hires. Like when yes. we launched tours, it was launching tours with Ethan. Oh yeah, yes. I was one of the I was one of the first tour guys to to join in New York, uh, which was uh, like a great gift, which was an amazing gift. But the cool thing is, you absolutely get to see the difference between our, you know, and again with these crawl areas. If you're looking at something like an other half, or you're looking at a Wild East, or you're looking at a Strong Rope, you're looking at a very you're in more of a residential area. It tends to be a much smaller operation where we can immediately we can quickly take you to something that's in another part of Brooklyn that also has a very large brewery scene, but is more working at a production capacity, like yeah. uh, let's say Five Bros Brewing Company, where all of a sudden you go from seeing very small fermenters and very small production vessels where huge, great ma material is coming out to this in, to these breweries that are doing this massive production in a like very dense urban environment. And it's cool to see in the exact same, you know, tour or crawl both of these kinds of uh production that's happening in our borough yeah so yeah mm -hmm. a nice uh a nice scope of what mm -hmm. is available in the beer scene at large represented yeah. in brooklyn uh you mentioned a specific brewery there and i think it's a good segue to uh move on to our next beer Yes. Let's talk about threes and let's enjoy oh. this all or nothing West Coast IPAs in the world of hazies and New England IPAs and double dry hopping. I feel like West Coast is becoming uh, the new like brewer's favorite style. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel like I, you know, as East Coasters, we should probably take offense to that. But here's the thing. I grew up on a West Coast. I grew up on a West Coast IPA. I can't really say that, but um, I do love a West Coast IPA. So I'm always excited to see what Threes is putting out. Hey, look, man, don't don't sell yourself short. You have grown mm -hmm. since you started drinking beer. So you've grown up on them. That's true. That's true. I have grown. Thank you. I will take that. We have all yeah. grown. Maybe not in size so much. I think we were That's probably true. done growing a little bit ago, but you know. I hope people... well, I've, as people as people, I, I mean that said, I have had a loss of hair in that process. Um, so you know, it's it's a it's a push and pull, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, so we have this wonderful West Coast IPA from Threes, another awesome uh Brooklyn Brewery, I believe specifically in the Gowanus neighborhood. Yes. Founded in the Gowanus neighborhood. Yep. Um, and they are they are a part of that crawl I was mentioning to do with Wild East um and our friends at Strong Rope. This is they are yeah. a good capper, partially because they have good food. They have, oh my God, they have good food. Uh mm -hmm. let's let's do a little cheers here and we'll get into the cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Ethan. Ooh, much clearer on this one for sure. Mm-hmm. And much, yeah, much cleaner taste. You get that crispness mm -hmm. on the back end. Um, the hops are a little bit more pronounced up front. There's a little bit of bitterness, but it's not mm -hmm. super, you know, bitterness whirls from bitterness wars from the, the 2010s. Like this, yes, absolutely. This is a very balanced West Coast IPA. Um, boasting some pretty sick hops too. There's Simcoe, Mosaic, mm -hmm. my favorite, Strata. Oh, and then uh, Cascade and Columbus as well um really nice beer yeah oh. always good and and i do i do always appreciate a threes ipa um and also they've got some standards that are just sort of great out there their vleet which is one of their pilsners is just a very clean beer if you're just looking for something to cool you down on a hot day that is a go-to um it's a beer that i often use as an introductory beer for people who are looking to move into the craft world so they want something more complex because it's just well done clean excellent kind of a beautiful well done thing but i'm i'm digging this i i'm getting a little bit of aroma tropical i do feel the pine forest i feel like i might be further upstate thank you doug in in a forest of new york city enjoying a beer thinking about the tropical beaches that could be on the other side of the country yeah mm -hmm. um funny that you should mention the food there and the amazing the amazing tap room atmosphere mm -hmm. at threes i had this amazing new york story this amazing new york encounter mm -hmm. the first time i went up there so i went up to brooklyn i was working 
with uh I was working with City Brew Tours at the time. I'm still working with City Brew Tours at the time. I don't know why I'm getting hung up on these details. Uh <laughs> I was going there to, you know, just do a site visit and check mm-hmm. in on our guides and check in on how tours were going and and talk to some of our um affiliates there and I had a night to myself and I figured let's go out. I'll I'll check out a couple breweries. I'll have some fun. Started at other half went over to KCBC, which uh, Kings County Brewers Collective, which is going to be featured next week. Such Um, a cool brewery. Great brewery. I'm sitting there having a beer. They're playing metal on the speakers. I'm like, this is this is my place. And I'm in New York and I start to feel, you know, just a little lonely as I'm looking around and seeing all these people enjoying the company of their friends. And, you know, I can feed off the atmosphere, but I started to get a little lonely and I I look down the bar and I see this guy wearing a hat that says Dancing Gnome on it, which is one of my favorite local breweries here in Pittsburgh. And I'm like, oh, that guy's got a Dancing Gnome hat. And I look at who is wearing the Dancing Gnome hat. And it is my friend Kevin, who is a bartender at Dancing Gnome. And I was like, oh, "Oh my God, screamed at him from across the brewery, this like 35 foot long brewery. I was like, Kevin, yes, Uh, screamed across this like 40 foot bar, yelled at him. And just in a city of whatever, 14, 20 million people, however many million people are in New York City, I just happened to be sitting at a bar drinking a beer while my friend was also in town. He lives in Pittsburgh, Mm -hmm. was in town, and we happened to be drinking at the uh, same brewery at the same time. So he and I uh, jumped in an Uber. We headed over to Threes, had some really great beers. I believe I had a Vienna lager that night, which was oh, just, yes. mm-hmm. mwah, mwah, just so perfectly done. And then we had some food items from their menu. I can't remember what everything was, but one of them was so simple. It was just a bowl of pickled vegetables, yep. and they were so good. There was so much depth and flavor and acidity, and um, it was just a great great new york experience i haven't been to new york a lot but i feel like i really had myself a new york night um that one night well i feel like you nailed it and and there's like three major elements to that um first is that threes has a beautiful backyard outdoor space which really kind of is a quintessential especially brooklyn thing you have to get that one um the second is serendipity which is meeting someone uh, having an unexpected moment in new york because there are so many of us that we tend to bump into each other and so those serendipitous moments i think are the things that keep especially transplants to new york here um because you never quite know what you're going to expect. And the third really is pickled vegetables. And I do think that this is an <laughs> underappreciated element of New York life, um, which is that um, pickles are an important part of Brooklyn, um, not only historically, but also like today. Um, and there are a surprising number of breweries um, and beer halls and you know, local establishments that do serve pickled vegetables for you to drink with. And so if you're not having your gardenia spread, I don't think you're doing it right. Just for the record, for the record. So honestly, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna as as finally having averaged into New Yorker dumb, I'm gonna give you a check mark on having had a successful New York evening in that sense. Well, well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> much as Doug provided validation for you from the chat. I thank you, Ethan, for providing validation for me. <laughs> It's what we're all about here. It's what we're all about here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I, have... I, go, okay. I just, I do want to call it, but threes is sort of this like really cool spot that, um, that has this beautiful back area. And one of the things I always look for in, a spot to have a drink in Brooklyn, especially, is a backyard. Um, because I think one of, especially now that it's getting really hot, and New York does bake during the summers. Oh, um, yeah. We talk That's about swamp. The, very much so yes um yeah the aroma of like late august is definitely garbage um and i don't necessarily want to be drinking (laughs) next to that so i keep an ear or an eye open for anyone that's got a beautiful backyard and i've got some magical memories um one of my fellow beer vengers um he goes by hop head huck on our podcast you might also know him here as mike um because i know he's been around your neighborhood a bit too friend Um, of the show yes yes definitely and a dear friend of mine i remember dragging him out for his birthday one year because he decided he wasn't going to do anything and i said mikey i took the day off from work for you like this Uh -uh. we're, we're doing a thing and I was like, I will plan a crawl for you. That's fine. Within 48 hours, he had literally given me a, a like timed out crawl through Brooklyn of what breweries he wanted to go to. And we ended at threes. 
and his his wife who goes by cider girl on our beer cast um knew, knows what mike likes and we ended our evening in the backyard at threes looking up under this beautiful sort of like uh, they've got these exposed bulb lights that hang over the area. Um, and my favorite thing to get off of their menu, besides the pickled vegetables, which again, quintessential, is their um, pretzel with beer cheese. That's our go-to. That was and the other thing we got. That yep. was the other See? thing we got. See, you've been success. Check mark. You continue check marks. You're doing great, Brian. I'm so proud. Um, Let's go. But- I have this beautiful memory of, and we had been, this was our fourth bar of the night. We had ordered pizza. Like we had had this evening and we were really marking Mike's birthday. Uh, And we wound up in the backyard. And I remember looking up and thinking just how lucky we were as the sun was setting to be drinking a beer in this gorgeous backyard in Brooklyn. Um, And it's a memory that I will never forget from Threes. Um, So if you are drinking in Brooklyn and you don't make your way to Threes, go find yourself a backyard to drink in because that's one of, for at least for me, one of the major check marks of drinking in Brooklyn is that secluded backyard spot where you look up and there are buildings all around you. It's sort of it's sort of what we aim for in the Better Borough. That said, I will also mention it was Mike's uh, last birthday beer crawl in New York City. So it also holds a special... He has, he has migrated to the West Coast he, where he will be enjoying more IPAs just like this. Um, but it was a really, it was a really fun moment and a, a reason that I continue to think back fondly on threes whenever I drink their beers or whenever I go visit. Yeah, that sounds like a really special night. That's mm-hmm. that's really awesome, and I I think a lot of people, I, my I, myself included, I gave mm-hmm. a story earlier. Like mm-hmm. the, it's the people have these amazing experiences. Whether you're going to beer, whether you're going to New York City to see shows on Broadway, do some tourism stuff, go mm-hmm. over to Brooklyn and see see like the real part of new york these people that are experiencing it every day and and drinking in backyards and on rooftops you can find yourself a very special memorable impactful experience and that's what we're going to spend the next three weeks doing is telling you why you should go to new york even if you've heard all the things about new york and you don't want to go there because it's a tourist trap and blah 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 Oh, Go you can leave Times. You can leave Times Square behind. Just come visit us in Brooklyn. We're having way more no, fun over here. I mean, don't, yeah. don't even go to Times Square. You don't even need to go there. Mm-hmm. We got beautiful brownstones and we got great beer. So what else do you need? Look, as someone that's been in New York, just a very small handful of times. Look, you go to Manhattan, you go to John's of Bleecker. Oh, uh, good choice. And you get a whole pizza. You eat it by yourself. Yes. You eat the Correct. whole pizza by yourself. And that's you, the right you that's it, you the only the way you do it mm-hmm. and get out of manhattan and go and spend yeah. the rest of your day in brooklyn and you'll yes. have a wonderful wonderful time um yeah I, I i think that's all we have for tonight ethan thought thoughts final thoughts closing uh, arguments oh gosh i am so uh <laughs> honored to be repping brooklyn this this month uh i mean i've been so happy to be adopted by this borough and 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 to be a part of it for over two decades and to be getting my like drinking legs as a part of it so honestly let's do this because we're gonna get to hang out with some of my favorite people who are making some of the finest beer as far as i'm concerned and i can't wait Yes, and we're going to hear more from Threes. We're going to hear from our friends at KCBC. And we're going to close out the month with with the juggernaut, the granddaddy oh. of them all in Brooklyn Beer, Brooklyn Brewing Company. And we're hoping to uh, bring you something very special for that episode. Um, but yeah, right now, I think everybody should go check out Other Half on Instagram. It's at Other Half NYC. You could follow them for all of their New York going ons. You could also check out Threes on Instagram at Threes Brewing. Threes is spelled like the number T H R E E S at Threes Brewing. Um, if you would like, if you if you like what you're hearing on this show and think, oh, these guys are good drinking these beers. These these people are drinking these beers. I'd like to drink these beers too. You can head over to shop.citybrewtours.com and explore subscription options. Yes, this isn't just a show for me to sit here and talk about beer all the time. We bring the beer to you. Mm -hmm. You could sign up for the City Brew Tours Beer Club and get excellent beers like these very beers shipped to you on a monthly basis. You can also join us on the live stream as we record the podcast every week, in addition to getting special perks and benefits that only come with being a member of the beer club of the longest running north american brewery tour company that is city brew tours we've been doing these brewery tours and teaching people about the fun side and educational side of beer since 2008 
We have locations in over 20 different markets around North America. So head over to citybrewtours.com and check out where we're doing tours. And also head over to shop.citybrewtours.com to explore subscription options for our wonderful beer club. Next week, we're going to be featuring one of my absolute favorite breweries in the country. As we've talked about many times on this show, I, I love beer. Obviously, I do this. I work at a brewery. I drink beer. I love beer. I brew beer. It, it's kind of my thing. Uh, my other thing is death metal. I love metal, specifically death metal. And KCBC, the Kings oh County Brewers Collective, is officially one of the metal breweries in America. And uh, we will talk to them all about that and the amazing, amazing beers that they sent us for the beer club next week. But until then, everyone, stay safe, be kind, and you know, support local breweries. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers, y'all. Uh.